Hey everyone, I know it's been a long time, but don't worry. I got a lot of new stuff to share with all of you. Let's get to it. Join me every Thursday on YouTube for another live show of Let's Talk Photography. We cover the latest news, interviews with today's industry leaders, tips, tricks, lighting, cameras, and the business of photography. My weekly live stream is all about crowd participation. You're encouraged to ask questions, talk about the cool camera gear you've got or the camera gear you want to get. Hell, you can just join our open panel discussion during our Q&A portion of the show. The cost of access to Let's Talk Photography is very, very low. For today only, I'm hosting a very low price of free 99 to subscribe and press that bell icon to get notifications of my upcoming live streams. Now let's get back to the show. Oh yeah, you already know everyone. Come on. Yes, I have my sound effect trigger ready. Uh... I have, uh, I tried to look for some new sound effects, but don't worry. I got the oldies, but goodies. Come on now. Oh, yeah. Yes. Woo, it's been some time. I know, I know. Shame on me. Shame on me. I know, I know, I know. But I needed this. So, um, tell you the truth, I want to start off by sharing why. It's been like a bit of a hiatus with me on this live stream situation. Uh, quite honestly, I, I was um, a bit overwhelmed and burnt out with a lot of projects at the particular time. I needed to take a break. I looked at everything that I was doing at that moment. And the live stream out of everything was the one thing that I can um, that, uh, that I could pull away from. And it wouldn't damage uh, the things I have going on overall. Like it didn't hurt my YouTube channel per se. I know a lot of you were wondering what was going on, but I needed a break. I was getting very exhausted and I had to prepare for my uh, out of country trip to Greece for a family wedding. I have uh, my film project, which we start production um, next Sunday. So I have a lot I had casting, production meetings. I'm fundraising for it. I had a lot going on and still do. but. Um, because of all of you, uh, letting me know, Hey, what the heck's going on? Will you be going back live? And some of you let actually letting me know how much you like the live streams. I decided to bring it back and it may not be as consistent, but I'm definitely going to be doing live streams. That's a guarantee. Just stay tuned, subscribe, obviously. And, um, that's the best way to keep informed as to what's going on and um and i also will be going i'm going to be making exclusive content for those on my patreon so uh what i wanted to do is go live more consistently for my patreon members because um to be honest to do these live streams the way that i feel that these live streams deserve i do a lot of research um, you know, designing the thumbnails, all that stuff. But I do a lot of research on the topic so that we can keep the conversation flowing and productive. Um, I do once in a while, we will be just doing rants and we'll be able to just have an open panel discussion. But overall, I like for there to be a reason why you tune in or at least watch the restream. So I actually go and research specific topics that may actually help one or two or three of you out there in the YouTube world. Um, with all that said, as it says right here, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Come on now. Come on. Um, what do we have here? Let's get all the, let's get all the business out the way first. All right. Let's get the business. First things first. You already know. Come on. If you haven't already, shame on you. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, threads, TikTok while you pop lock and i'm on twitter too so go ahead and follow me all of my links are in the description section of this video uh i'm very active on all of them okay i'm very active on all of them so make sure you go ahead and check that out one of the best ways to support my endeavor really because this uh, is on patreon go ahead and over on patreon yes the link is in the description section down below 
and you come on over, support me by helping me get a cup of coffee for as little as five dollars. That's right, five dollars. And I will be posting regular educational and uh industry content there on my Patreon. I will be doing exclusive live streams for only Patreon members. So you definitely want to uh jump on that. And um, so I I'm I'm specifically making things up for my Patreon members. That's going to allow me to be able to dedicate more time to YouTube channel uh, or in, in creating content that's useful for all of you photographers out there. And that includes videography, um, tutorials, tips, tricks, etc. as well. I want to be able to dedicate more time, but time is money, as we all know. So any support you can do would be greatly appreciated. It'll at least allow me to buy another cup of coffee. There we go. All right, now, I do have something for all of you. Believe it or not, I actually have a workshop coming up. Oh, my God. Can you believe it? I can. Oh, yeah. I know. Even Macho Man is excited about it. You go ahead. Uh, head on over to robertsilverphotography.com, and you can actually check it out for yourself. That's right. I have this upcoming photography workshop called Outdoor Flash Portrait Photography Workshop. I'm going to help you folks understand uh, the fundamentals of using flash photography while on location. We're going to do, um, we're going to start toward the end of the afternoon, shoot toward um, sunset and et cetera. So we're going to have a great time. We're gonna, it's going to be in San Francisco at the Botanical Gardens. So I hope that you all are there. All you have to do is go on over here. I'm going to show you. I'm going to walk you right through this process because I'm a gentleman. You're going to go right there to uh, robertsilverphotography.com. Matter of fact, let me go here. I'll show you right now, robertsilverphotography.com. Okay. Now, when you go to robertsilverphotography.com, all you got to do is press education. Look at that. I'm walking you right through this. Now, once you're here, you can either scroll down and you can see my most recent upcoming workshop, which is right here, and you go check it out for yourself, all the details, all the deets. And guess what? I actually have uh, payment options via Afterpay. Okay, so shout out to Square. So if you want to split up your payments, you certainly can. But it's there December 2nd uh, in San Francisco. Now, you could also press Workshops, and it'll take you right down to here. Boom, bada, bing. And you can see the most current work workshop coming up. And then I also will be doing Studio Light. Lighting for portraits, a natural light work, a natural light photography workshop, and a beauty photography workshop. So I got a lot of stuff in store for all of you folks. If you're in the Bay Area, definitely you want to come down, check this out, and hopefully come support. And I uh, would love to see you there. I also will be, uh, I now offer um, 30 minute and one hour one on one trainings, whether it be virtually, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or whatever humps you're trying to get over about the business of photography or your photography skills, you go ahead and you can now book a private lesson with numero uno right here, your uh, your brother from another mother, or you can just do a quick, if you just have a couple quick questions, then, then I have the 30 minute rapid session. Okay. So you go ahead and check all that out right here on this website. Again, all you got to do is when you're at robertsilverphotography.com, all you got to do is click education and it'll take you right to it. That's it. Boom, bada bing. Very easy. Okay. Made it very easy for all of you. Um, What else do we have for you? I do want to let you know, I do have my latest video up. Some of you may have seen it. Some of you may have not, but this is what inspired this week's live stream. Okay. It's my trip to Greece, my first time trip to Greece, and technically I was on the island of Crete, okay? It was super amazing. It's ab absolutely a landscape photographer's dream come true. It is phenomenal. And if you love hiking in nature, it is a great place to go. I actually would consider going back just for that, the hiking and the um, landscape photography. So in this video, I share with you what I stuffed into my camera bag because guess what? An ounce is a pound. So therefore, 
you have to be very careful. At least I knew I had to when it came to traveling, because otherwise they'll charge you more. And then secondly, um, when you're hiking for three, four, five, six hours, you know, you want to keep it as uh, efficient as possible how you pack that bag. All right. And I do want to let you know, you folks want to uh, subscribe to my channel. Come on now. Subscribe to the channel. All right. <laughs> subscribe to the channel. And uh, because you're about to check out the latest video I'm going to be posting. Guess what? I was able to do an, uh, I collaborated with Mike's camera. Uh, at uh, and I did an unboxing of the Nikon ZF kit. That's right, with the 24 to 70 f4 lens. I did an official unboxing in collaboration with Mike's camera. Shout out to Mike's camera. So you will be seeing that video up. Um, I believe I'm going to probably post it tomorrow. But uh, but make sure you su subscribe to my channel. Hit the smash that bell icon to get notifications of when that video goes live. I just got notification from them that they said, go ahead and post it. And I'm, I'm super excited about it. So shout out to Mike's camera. As many of you know, I, uh, I, I support shopping local. If and when possible, shop local. You're actually hiring your neighbor or somebody in your community that works at a store. Shop local, support the, support the small guys. Um, for me, it's Mike's camera, Derek, as you know, my buddy, he works over there at the Pleasant Hill store. That's where I did this video at. And Derek actually was the one who assisted me making this video. Shout out to him. And, um, so you'll be seeing this video again, the official unboxing and initial, um, opinion piece, if you will, of the ZF camera. All right. Um, I will be doing a photo shoot with that camera on Saturday. So I'll bring that video to you next week. So again, subscribe. And uh, I have a model ready. We're going to do a couple of outfits. And I'll give you my opinion of capturing portraits using a ZF. So you don't want to miss out on that ever. All right. Let's go ahead and check some of these here comments. Hey, Malcolm. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you very much for tuning in. I, 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 Malcolm, you know, um, I like that new setup you have. That looks that looks fantastic. I can't wait to see how you deck it out and, and trick out that entire room. Go ahead and check out Malcolm Walker's uh, YouTube channel, everyone. All right. Spread the love. You know, subscribing is absolutely free for now. OK, so go ahead. Support his channel. Uh, we got J-Rod. Hi. -oh. Yeah. Dre Rod was one of the people say, hey, what the heck's going on, man? You know, so awesome. And then uh, he goes, you know what time it is. Yes, sir, I do. Oh, yeah. There we go. And we got R.B.J. in the house. Come on now. Yeah, brother. That's right. We got, I'm sorry, everybody. That was the atomic bomb. And yes, I know I've been gone for a minute. I, have, I haven't been gone. I've just been. Uh, spreading my, I've just been trying to, how can I say, be careful on how I spend my energy. Believe it or not, I love doing this. I love connecting with you all this, but I have to look at the numbers and understand where my energy is best spent at, at a particular moment. The live streams are great. Um, um, if they did a thousand views per video, you know, uh, after a week, yeah, I would do a hell of a lot more of them. So that's really what it comes down to. But it takes a lot of energy and a lot of enthusiasm to talk to all of you. And um, it takes a few hours of preparation, two hours with all of you. It's a lot of work. So whatever you guys can do, at minimum, what you can do is smash that like. Come on, people. Come on. You already know what I'm talking about. Smash that like. Um, what else is there? You can, if at all possible. You could send over that super chat, super sticker. It always helps. And um, don't worry, YouTube will take 30%. So that's just the way things go. Exactly. Um, what else is there? Uh, let's get back to that. J-Rod says, snap it to a Slim Jim. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Macho Man, and if I, I got to get more Ric Flair stuff. He always talking his smack. I think I have a Ric Flair. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Ric Flair, baby. I do this for a living. 
I do this for a living. I love that. I do this for a living. <laughs> anyway, Nick is in the house. Hey, man, thanks a lot for tuning in. Really appreciate it. Um, and Malcolm says, Built Out is coming. Yes. Everybody go check out his, I believe it's his latest video from his Monday live stream. And he shows you the diagram of how he's going to plan to trick out his entire room. It's really sweet. I can't wait to see the results. Uh, the drunk wedding photographer. Hey, buddy, how's it going? Hey, I really appreciate you. I, you know what? I really am happy to see all of you familiar names and faces um, in the comments. It, I know it's been a long time. It, it's nothing personal. It's just, again, I, I was literally feeling exhausted physically, like exhausted. I needed a break, but I couldn't take a break. Okay. By the way, I'm going to shamelessly uh, self-plug myself. There we go. Here we go. Make sure the camera sees that. Okay. So, so I appreciate you tu tuning in. RBJ, what up, though? Hey That's what I'm talking about, brother. Uh, like smash. Thank you, Roy. Really appreciate that one. Oh, my goodness. Hold on. I got something for Roy. Open up your digital wallet, and I don't mean crypto. Here we go. There you go. That's for you, Roy. Uh, Vic with the sunglasses. I like that. I like the glasses. You know, I have like nine pairs. It's ridiculous. Okay. I I couldn't I couldn't do uh contacts. I tried. Contacts are not for me. So what I ended up doing, I said, you know what? I'm gonna double down on glasses. So now I own like a gazillion pair and counting. Uh Nick said, don't forget to charge the batteries. Absolutely not. I will not. Uh, the battery on this camera should be good to go for, our, yeah, it's at full. So we're looking good. Uh-oh, look at this guy right here. Come on now. I want to give everybody a big shout out, right? <laughs> to Anthony right here. A good, okay. Uh, Big Rob back on the live stream. Yeah, baby. <laughs> but... I want to give a big quick shout out to Anthony because he is sponsoring this week's product highlight. Come on now. That's right. He's sponsoring this particular highlight. So, um, oh, look at this. Nick, look, look at Nick. Say, okay. I have a battery charging now for tomorrow. Good. Hey, tomorrow, you know what? Um, Tomorrow, I'm going to be doing, you know, got the two fashion shows this coming weekend. I'm going to do the Z9 for both of them. Um, I'm going to do the Z8 for the behind the scenes. That that seems to work for me. Um, I'll slap the 512 on the Z8. And then I will do, depending on the show and the distance between the floor, or I mean the uh, the stage and myself. 24 to 70 or the 70 to 200. Call it a day. I'm not going to bring anything else. Um, cool. So we have that. Now let's get to the next segment of today's show, which is our product highlight. Shall we? Let's get into it. Come on now. All right. So. I'm going to get into my serious voice because this is a very serious moment right now. And to all you cool photo bugs, uh, what does he call it? Uh, what do you call it? Photo bugs? No, they call them, um, uh, okay, photo bugs. We'll just call you all photo bugs, okay? And photo gals out there. I got something very cool for all of you. And this is a very awesome moment right now. Shout out to a good a.k.a. Anthony, for sponsoring today's product highlight. And what I have for all of you cool cats and kittens out there is... The Plina! Come on, everybody. You know you want to see this one. Come on, people. Where are the hands at? Where are the hands at? There we go. There... That's right. Check this out, everybody. So, I know uh, my buddy Vahagen and I, uh, Z-Wade posted their take on this but don't worry my boy tony he literally got this delivered to his place he texts me and says come on robert 
you know you want to check this lens out. And I'm sitting there looking at him with three heads like, bro, you just got this. Why in the world would you want me to, re- to, 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 to grab this and review it? He's like, come on. You know you want to take it. And I said, okay, well, I won't be, I'm not going to fight with you. I will gladly review this lens for you and bring it to all of you out there. And that's what I'm here to do. Um, with that said, I will be doing an unboxing video. I'm going to record it tomorrow morning. So check out that real soon. And then I will be shooting with it for like a week. I believe Tony said I can uh, borrow this from him for. And then um, I'll bring to you all the images what I've been able to do with the Plena. I'm actually, the first thing I'm shooting is on Saturday. And I believe I'm also going to do some night photography with a model to check out that good old juicy Boca. Come on. That's right. I want to check out this Boca. That's what I really want to check out. And um, so I want to give a big shout out to Tony. So if you say a hey, good, make sure you go ahead, shout him out, tell him thanks. So stay tuned. All you got to do is subscribe to my channel. Smash that bell icon for you to stay updated. All right. So there we go. We got the Plena, baby. Got the Plena. So that is this week's product highlight. I am more, I'm, I'm over the moon with excitement to use that lens and grateful that uh, a good, a.k.a. Tony, is let me borrow this bad boy. Really, really do. Uh, wait, Nick says, I, I I hate managing batteries. I have a desk full of constant rotation. Char- I know I do, too. I really do. Um, J-Rod says, good evening, all. Uh, J-Rod, oh, look at that. No way. I know why. Would love to have that 135. I know. I mean, I quite honestly, when, when he offered for me to borrow it, I was like, bro, there's no way I felt kind of bad, quite honestly. But he 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 was like, no, you know, it's all good. And um almost insisted. So here I am. Uh no, that's not just the box, J Rod. Okay, that is not just a box, okay? Um, it's in there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, it's heavy. It, it's in there. It's for sure in there. I know what you're doing. I know what you're doing. You want me to open it up. Okay. That's what I know what you want me to do. But guess what? I will. In my next video that I'll record tomorrow called the Plena Unboxing. So make sure you go ahead and subscribe and I'll show you what's actually in here. Is it a lens or is it a paperweight? I don't know. You don't know. Subscribe to find out. All right. Okay, so we have that. Um, I wish the planet came out before the 85 F12. Did you, Roy, did you end up buying the 85 To me, the 85 is a good staple portrait lens, but that 135, I'm not going to lie, it's, it's, it's awfully nice and slightly cheaper. So there you go. So that, that's a good win. Drunk wedding photographer. Whoa, exactly. Oh, yeah. That's exactly what I. Rent, but Macho Man said it best. Um, I just see a plenty of box. Ooh, okay, okay, all right, all right. I I hear you. I see where you're trying to go with that. Um, uh, and he said, "No problem, Rob. I want to gonna uh, I I know you're gonna rock the review, brother. I'm gonna do the unboxing, and then I'll do a full review video. Okay, so thank you very much. I appreciate that." Garen Christopher, a new face in the house. Come on. Uh, I want that 135. Uh, won't be getting that until 2026. Hey, brother, I might be that right there with you because that lens is um, it's it's definitely not cheap. Um, it's you know, so that's that's definitely um a, a, an issue. I but I think I'm gonna do first the ZF. I really like the ZF camera. Um, it, it's so much fun. And if I was able to, I would have brought that with me to Greece. So uh, that's where my money's going right now. The 135 is definitely a cool lens, but it's not a lens that I, I desperately need right now, but it's gorgeous so far as I could tell, but I'll let you all know in my next video. Okay. Uh, J rod. Whoops. Excuse me. Love me some Z glass. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> 
And we have drunk wedding photographer open to make sure. Ah, uh, see, see, I see, I see where you guys are going there. You want to make sure, huh? All right. You know what? Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go like this. Okay. Some, some of you, Anthony, they don't believe us. They don't believe us. They don't believe us. But what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna slowly. Oh yeah, this is. I don't think he's opened this up. I don't even think Anthony has opened this up. Now, look at this. Come on, ladies and germs. Come on, shutterbugs. You already know. Got the warranty. Anthony's warranty right here. Okay, look at that. It's official. I'm not going to show you all the details. That's his private info. And then, look, I'm not going to take open it up all the way. There you go. All right? It's either a beautifully packed paperweight, Nikon paperweight, or you already know. Come on. I'll do the full unboxing tomorrow. Don't worry. Stay tuned for that. This would be the most expensive paperweight I've ever touched, if that was the case. All right. Let me put this down. All right. So that's enough. All right. Stay tuned for my next video. But I see where you guys are going. Plenty of lens. Coffee mug? <laughs> you know, I wouldn't be surprised if they made one. It would be like a, what would it be? Like a 24 ounce, something like that? That'd be beast. Um, J-Rod, packing up for a small trip myself. Have to plan out and be prepared. Dude, you know what? Um, it took me three days to plan my camera bag when I left. So I understand. Uh, Anthony, hey, Rob, just ordered the 8512 today. Hobo. Oh man, that's crazy. Oh yeah. Um, the 8512 would be a fantastic addition to my bag. It really would. After using the 512, honestly, um, that caliber of lens, quality, detail, sharp and uh sharpness and, and color, you it's really hard to go back. Um, but if I got the ZF though. I would get eight, I would get F18 lenses. Reason why is I think it's more better balanced to use with the ZF. I'll explain that later in the next video. I mean in a future video. Um, but outside of that, man, it's really hard to go back after once you hit the one, two uh aperture range. Um, so awesome. Let me know how that works out. You know I have a I have a lens review of that lens on my channel feel free to check it out but you already bought it so it doesn't really matter um roy says i bought the 8512 and the 50 now i'm trying to resist buying the plena hey, amen you know what um the one that i'm really excited for is the 3512 if they could hurry up and get that puppy out um i think that would be a fun fun it would be a great lens I also think it would be a big seller for Nikon if they could finally get out the 3512. Cause I would have to I'd have to get it, quite honestly. Uh J Rod says, check the warranty card. Might be the new 200 MC macro. Oh no, sir. It's the Pleno, baby. It's the Pleno. Okay. I see what you guys try to do. Um, Anthony says, I didn't open it, bro. See? Wow. All right. So I could I could tell you didn't open it, Tony, because I mean, Anthony, because when I was opening up the latch, it was crisp. It was it was fresh. You you know, people haven't opened it and closed it. Brand new has that new car smell. Um, Garen comes in. Do the one hundred five versus the one thirty five? Okay, that would actually be a great comparison. Um, I sold the one hundred five F one four already. But I do have the 105 f2.8 macro for Z, for the Z mount. I could compare that, but I don't think it would be a fair, fair comparison just because um, the build quality of the Plena is going to be far superior than that 105 f2.8. Now, I could just shoot them both for, for bulk of purposes, comparison, uh, detail, sharpness, all that stuff. But one to one it wouldn't be fair you know and just because the 105 macro f2.8 you know the build quality isn't as good as i feel like it should but it's light it's super light though i own it i love it 
but I, I I just don't think it's a fair direct comparison in that sense. Um, I have the 105 and the 7200, both 28. So I'm not sure if it makes sense to get the 135. That's a very good point. Um, I'm not rushing to get it because a lot of things that I do, the 70 to 200, 28 does a fantastic job at it. There's zero, there's zero issues with the uh zero issues with the 7200 in my case. So the 135 would be just because I want to get it. Um, I felt I needed the 51 too. So that wasn't even a question because that's my favorite focal length anyway, if I had to choose one lens. So, yes, I agree with you. I agree. I think that's a log uh, logic approach. Roy comes in. The 8512 is a chubby boy, but doesn't fit on the Z6 and Z8 very well. See, that's that's the one thing that I noticed like when I uh, did the unboxing for the, Z, for the ZF is balance, right? I talked about that in my... 8512 review um video is how well the 8512 felt really well with the Z9. And it actually feels really well with the Z8 as well. It was a great, those are great pairings. The body the body, uh, the weight of the body as well as the lens, it felt really good and comfortable in the hand, even though the entire setup may weigh a few pounds, it doesn't feel as much because the balance is really well. Um, I put on a 51, my 51 two onto the ZF. Of course, you're going to get fantastic images, no doubt about it, but the balance is significantly different. So therefore, uh, you notice the weight more when using, uh, that combo. So yes, I agree with you. The 85 one, two is chubby, but you put that sucker on a Z eight Z nine, and all of a sudden it becomes more pleasurable. Uh, and unfortunately, in this case, in your case, you're saying the Z6 and Z, I'm not sure what that is. Let's just say seven uh, may not fit well, but uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. I see. I see a comment already. Love that 105 macro. Yes. Uh, it should compare well with the plenum. You know what? Maybe I will do that then. Um, that's a great video. Let me write that down. You, you folks are giving me some great video ideas. Hold on. Oh, don't wait a minute. Wait a minute. So let's do that. So let's do 105 Mac versus 135 Plena. Okay. Boy, you folks. Great ideas. Thank you very much, everybody. I really appreciate the great suggestions. Really do. Really do. Uh, I have Sigma 105.14 if you want to use it, Rob. Um, that is a great lens. The hold on oh i did the i did the third 135 millimeter lens review years ago when it first came out but the 105 is great um huge elements do i want to do that that could be a fun one we'll talk about that i'll text you uh we'll talk about that one uh, anthony um uh roy comes in i just weekend uh just ordered a plena Woo! There you go, Roy. That's what I'm talking about. Jumping that bank. I wish Nikon made more low element uh, C lenses. If they make a 50, I'm jumping in. Um, you know, I, honestly, right now, uh, Nikon has been on fire this year. So let's let's give credit where credit's due. You know, um, they've been dropping some great stuff. We got the Z9, the ZF, some some new glass. Uh, they're coming in hot and heavy. So we'll just cross our fingers to see where they go, but I'm excited. I, I'm, ex I'm happy for where the, the direction that they've been heading. Uh, Roy comes in. The ZF needs that small grip, a small rig grip, hundred percent. Um, you'll see that in my unboxing video that I post tomorrow, but it, it does need it. Um, but I'm actually gonna, when I, when I used it, it was an entirely new way of me taking photos and getting used to it because everything is all about the dials and whatnot and there's less um how can i say rotating dials it's more about you know the knobs up top and it was actually pretty fun to change up my style of using the camera to capture my photos so i'm going to try without the small rig 
but eventually I'm probably going to end up getting it, quite honestly. Because, you know, we're all used to the deep battery, uh, the deep grips of the Z8, Z9, and all, of, you know, D850, D750. So I could see a lot of people not feeling comfortable holding that camera, especially for an extended period of time. Uh, Nick, I'd love to have shoots where I can actually use these lenses. Running and gunning at a wedding with the 24 to 120 has me locked down. You know, I Nick, that is one lens I swear is on my hit list. The 24 to 120 f4 lens, I think it would be an excellent travel photography lens for sure. Um, so much range in that in that in that in that lens, and um, yeah, I've never heard anything bad about it. So, only thing is, yeah, for weddings, if you're in a, in a reception, you might need another stop or two of light. Uh, so, having a 1.8 prime for receptions could be a big help for you where you don't have to use so much flash power or um, it, you capture more ambient light, right? So that's the only limitation. But for every day walking around or cover most daytime events, yeah, that's a great lens. Um, there you go. Excellent choice. Yes. Uh, let's see here. I can't see a better lens than the 51.2. It's on another level. 100%. It was the first Prime that I bought in the Z. Um, for my Z cameras, never doubted the price in terms of, oh, did I get my money's worth? It's fantastic. I love that lens so much. I really do. Uh, bu -bu -bu. I'm waiting to see if the Z63 has dual USB ports and see if express slot before I get a ZF. Well, I could almost bet my bottom dollar it's at least going to have one SD and one CF express. That's for sure. Um, I don't think they're gonna, you know, I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pray it does at least, at least one of each. Uh, the ZF looks super fun. I mean, it's very power. It's feature rich, is what I mentioned in my unboxing. It is absolutely jam packed of photos and video features that it could have been easily twenty five hundred dollars at least. So for nineteen ninety nine, that camera is an incredible bargain and giving us full frame. So, you know, shout out to Nikon for that one. Uh, it's like they threw us a little bone. Uh, now, drunk wedding photographer recently sold my DF in the middle of the ZF frenzy. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you know, hey, I, I, when I saw that camera, I was like, man, that would be kind of fun. Um, and that was part of my being burnt out a little bit was that I needed a reason to have more fun in photography. It became so much of work. So I had to just pull back a bit. And the ZF is a great reason to just get out and take pics and not feel like I'm on the job. Um, don't forget the 105 macro, super underrated, underpriced, one of the best lenses. Yes, J-Rod, I mentioned that earlier that I do have the 105 macro F2.8 Z lens. I absolutely love that lens for, it, it was, it's, Yes, you're right. It's not only the one of the most underrated, it's one of the best priced Z lenses, okay? Um, it's fantastic, and you can use it for portraits. I got it for my weddings. So when I shoot rings and stuff like that, I have a nice, beautiful macro lens. All right. Let's get to today's topic, okay? Believe it or not, we actually have a show here. Uh, in the meantime, don't forget to go ahead and press that like, that share, subscribe. All right. If you haven't already, it's the most easiest way to support the channel. Very, very simple. And if you feel like YouTube taking 30% of whatever it is you want to help to support this channel, go ahead and send a super chat, super sticker, etc. 30% goes to YouTube because for some reason they just need all that and the rest comes this away and allows people like myself who put on these shows to buy another cup of coffee. So with that said, let's get to the main event. Um, cool. So let's get to it. So we're going to be talking about, here we go. Hold on. I'm so sorry. So I don't have my stuff together here. What kind of show am I running? Um, all right, there we go. We're going to be talking about 
travel photography, and what to pack for your next vacation. I want to hear from all of you too, because whoever's watching on a restream may actually learn from this dialogue. If you would like to join this conversation, let me go ahead and post that. Okay, folks, look at this, folks. I'm opening it up. I'm opening it up. Here we go. Right. Hey, the hey, come on now. I just um, posted the link in the super chat section. And you could join, the, you could join the discussion. All right. Just don't be crazy. Don't be rude. Don't be disrespectful. Otherwise you'll get the, you'll get the kick in the butt. By Macho Man Randy Savage, Randy Savage himself. Oh yeah. Um, let me see if we have any. There we go. Roy says the twenty four, uh, the twenty four to two hundred is one of the rare poor Z lenses. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, the twenty four to one twenty is the only one I've ever looked at in that in that in that space for sure. That one right there. Um, cool. All right, let's get to the first topic. Let me get my topics out. All right, remember, let me pin that link to above, actually. There we go. So I pinned it up to the top for anybody who wants to join the panel. Click that link. Go for it. It's all good. Boop, boop, boop. Okay, so the first topic we're going to go over Right. When we're talking about travel photography, first is what is the ideal camera for travel photography? I want to hear all of your guys' opinions. What is the ideal camera for travel photography for your for uh, in your case? For me, believe it or not, I bought the Lumix S5 Mark II for two obvious reasons. It's compact. Well, let me say three. Compact full frame and it does photos and video those are the three reasons why i chose the lumix s5 mark ii uh well i guess there is a number four it had it has phase detect autofocus so when i do the videos i don't need a monitor i don't i it, i can rely on the autofocus that's what i'm using right now to stream right now with so it's very reliable uh video system it's compact it's light and it's full frame so that's why I chose that camera specifically, and I I wasn't upset with it. Um, very happy with it. The battery life is good. I bought three batteries with me, by the way, and um, I never went through all three in any given day of my trip to Greece. So I was very happy with that system. As I mentioned earlier, if the ZF had came out and I had it in my um, in my other in my Nikon bag. It's very, 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 very good chance. I would have took that S S uh, ZF, excuse me, um, with the forty mil kit lens, uh, the f two point oh, and I would have brought like one lot wide lens, maybe the twenty four to seventy or something like that, and I would have been very happy taking all my pics with with those two lenses and with the ZF, because the ZF is compact, it's lightweight. It looks less like a professional camera and um, has a flip screen. And yes, you have HDMI port, you have the headphone jack, and you have a microphone jack. So I could totally use that to create video content uh, as well as I can take some pretty awesome full frame pictures with that ZF. So the ZF would have been the camera. That was a heavy, heavy, like a close contender. But the Lumix S5 is what I have right now. So that one bar none. I didn't want to bring a Z8 or a Z9 to Greece. You know, I'm going to an entirely new country. I don't speak their language. I'm certainly not going to be looking at every damn person walking by me. So therefore, I want something as inconspicuous as possible. So that's what I went with my camera. But what about all of you? I would love to hear from all of you. Uh, J-Rod says, hey, is it a vacation with family? How much gear do you take? What kind of camera or just your phone? How much time do you have? for each shot or bring a small camera in full auto. Well, I'll let you decide, but I I took 
I'm not going to lie. I took maybe just as many photos with my iPhone as I did with my, um, with my Lumix because the iPhone was just very convenient. But what I did is I used the Lightroom mobile app. If you guys haven't used the Lightroom mobile app, you're definitely missing out. Let me show you a little something, something. So when you're in your Lightroom mobile app, right? See if you can see this. There you go. You can, you can do, dang it. You could press on it. Now you could take photos, right? Now you're actually creating, I'm not sure if you can see that, D and G files, digital negative files with, through your iPhone, through the Lightroom mobile app. Now, when you take this picture, right, when you take a picture, let me just get to a picture. So here's a picture I took in Barcelona one time, right? Now, I took that with my iPhone and, um, geez, there we go. I took it with my iPhone, but you get access to all of the parameters and uh, editing tools of your Lightroom Classic desktop. You have it right here on your mobile phone. And, but you're editing a DNG file. So I took so many good photos using my iPhone during the daytime, um, but as a DNG, so I had m some more latitude with editing these files. So I, I absolutely had a great time doing that, and it was quicker. It was quicker. So I used, I used my iPhone. It is what it is. But then I had my, my Lumix as well, okay? Uh-oh, we got to... We got an intruder in here. Come on now. Let's, let's welcome this friendly intruder to the show. Come on, everybody. We got Malcolm in the house. Hey, everybody. How's it going? What's going on, man? How are you? I'm doing well. Awesome. Looking good. <laughs> well, I'm just a little bit, I'm, um, I don't know if I'm more rested, but I'm definitely more um, focused. That's, uh, that's why I had to step away for a hot second. I think we talked about it, you know. Yeah. Um, but I'm kind of glad I did, and um, I see you've improved. You you got your stuff on the way. That's pretty awesome. It's, it's, it's been a mess over here. I've got the. Uh, I don't know if the echoes coming through on your end, but uh, it's sound good. Very, okay, good because uh, yeah, it's it, this room's definitely booming when I talk. <laughs> but, well, uh, can you explain uh, for those who may not have watched your live stream um, what you're up to? So uh, we'll just rearrange the house and, and everything. And we got a fairly large, we have two bedrooms upstairs that are fairly large. And uh, and my son said he didn't want to be in this room and wanted to be downstairs near us. So it's a smaller room. That's where, if you go back on my channel, that's my very first studio is that small little room. Uh, and it's not a small room for what some people have. I mean, it's still a 12 by 10 or 12 by 11 room, but um, <clears throat> Me and my wife were sharing it at the time. So mm -hmm. I had about half and she had half. And I tried to keep my studio set up on the one half. But that's early on. And then about 2020 is when I went into our master bedroom. And that had that was about 14 by 12. So it's a little bit hmm. more room for me to move around and get stuff done. Um, and then, and then yeah, now this just came out of nowhere kind of on us that we could do this. And uh, so I took over the space. So... Yeah, if the space, uh, is, this is just my my drawing from the live we, you had mentioned I did. Oh, yeah. Dang, yeah. Um, this, just to get an idea of scale, this from this room, this wall here down to about a, a foot past this is 19 and a half feet. Wow. Um, so, yeah, we've got we've got a lot of room in this space. And, you know, I've got this is going to be one angle that you had on my live where I was sitting here going back on this on this wall with the notch out. And then we've got a potential desk here which is where i'm at now uh mm -hmm. facing kind of toward that notch wall with the tv which i just finally got up tonight so oh, i've been you. filming as i go and and try to do the build out video so i've got like i don't know 300 gigs of footage shot so far of Jeez. just randomness of doing work wow but it's is, been you know is it time lapsed or uh, some of it's going to be time lapse. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of the painting and stuff because we, like I said, we changed the wall color. So I went with flat paint colors and um, neutral gray. Uh, was it thunder gray? It, it, oh, you yeah. shine the light on it and it really popped the bet to whatever light you put on it. So, and I've got, a, I've got a stack of RGB lights to go in. I've got rope lights. I've got canister lights. I've got all sorts of stuff to 
to work on. So it's going to be a lot of work. It's going to take a few weeks and just slowly picking at it. Right now, like just tonight, I was just getting things put away and just so I could move this this table around because, like I said, it's on caster, so I can move it anywhere in the room and set up and, and shoot from any angle. So basically, it's going to be your little cave right there all to yourself? Yeah. Yeah, it'd be all to myself here. And then, um, yeah, like I said, you know, I want to, I'm not really a portrait photographer, but this room kind of set up for it because of this, this, this little bay here. It's about mm -hmm. seven and a half feet wide. So I'm about getting oh. some paper rollouts to put down. And, oh, that's awesome. You know, I've got a, a 19 foot shooting range. So definitely yeah. not upset with that. That's pretty good. Yeah. So. Well, I, I, congratulations. Um, so we're talking right now about ideal camera for traveling. What what, what what What's the camera body? Before we get to lenses, what's the camera you would pick up when you're on a, let's say, over overseas or an extended travel situation? Um, I, I would I would pick one of the, uh, well, I'm a Sony guy on the Nikon channel with you guys right now. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I would pick up, you know, the a, a Sony R camera. camera. Uh, just for the versatility of the resolution and be able to crop in on a lot of stuff. So mm. that comes into later on going into what lenses would you carry? You know, you don't necessarily need the extra reach of a bigger lens if you have the crop in ability of high resolution. That's definitely true. And um, would you bring one or two camera bodies? Um, I, I, I like carrying just one, honestly. I, the times I've, I had to really pack down to be light. I, I enjoy just having like my 24 105 on my, on my R2. I, I just, oh. It's just a good clean setup and I don't have to worry about messing with lenses or, or, uh, you know, having the bigger backpack they have to worry about what people are watching you or what are they doing. And that's right. I definitely, I definitely like having that. And I, I get the whole packing up for a long trip because you're going to carry everything with you and keep it secure. But when you go out for the day or something, I always like having just that small little bag or, or yeah. something just to have the camera just around the, really just around the neck strap. And that's one thing I always liked about the, the, the Sony bodies, especially the older ones, the Mark twos, yeah. uh, is they're small and they don't flash a lot at people like, Hey, look at me. I'm a big expensive camera, but it's a very capable camera. Yeah. And that covers a lot of range too. Yeah. Uh, that That's what I was just mentioning earlier about the, 24 to 120 uh f4 is that like wow if if you had to choose one to travel with that would pretty much be the one um yeah i it was it was the lens i've been wanting for a long time uh the opportunity came up i actually traded an a6400 for that lens mm. um on a straight across trade so it was a it was a fair trade because those go cameras go for about 900 views and the lens is anywhere from 900 to a thousand so you know it was a fair trade and worked for me and um, that lens has been through a lot with me. <laughs> it's been, it's been smashed and crashed a couple of times, but it's always survived. And I've had to take it apart once to fix the autofocus ring. But, uh, is that the lens you use a lot for, uh, travel stuff too? Like, yeah, okay. yeah. I mean, I do that. And then like I say, if you, if you follow my channel at all, you'll see that I do a lot of like the dark sky stuff. I still have my 24, one, four for that. And it's my go-to for that dark, dark sky stuff. But, uh, right on. But the, the 24 105, I mean, yes, it's an F4. People complain that it's an F4, but it, I mean, this day of age with the way the sensors read light and you say you can size, so it's, yeah, it's even on some of the older Sony cameras, they're still pretty impressive with what they can do. Right on. Okay. Well, you're, you're I'm trying to sell my, my 14 to 24 millimeter F2.8, but in the, um, DSLR, you know, for DSLR cameras, I'm mm -hmm. like, I can't, I can't do that. Uh, but, um, I'm thinking about trading it in at Mike's camera and put it toward a lens or a camera. And um, it may be that 24 to 120, you know, a nice everyday lens. Yeah. Um, all right. Hold on. Let's check some comments real quick. Let's check some comments. Okay. Boy, there's a, there's a lot of them. Um, okay. Here we go. The 24 to 200 is one of the, oh, okay. That one I think I read. Uh J Rod says he likes his 24 to 200. Shout out to that. That's a hell of a range right there. Uh, I joined a panel, but are pants optional? What? Of course. Uh, 
Yeah, if you if you have a big desk like this here, you can do whatever. <laughs> hey, you know what though? I've I've showed up to this live stream with pajamas on, and I pray one of you guys don't say, "Why don't you stand up?" And uh, <laughs> you would you would have seen some pa plaid pajamas real quick. But today I have dumpy sweats. I just have sweats on. Um, but we've all been there, you know. Remember during co like during the lockdown when people were doing full blown interview attire shirt tie and then they were like in their boxers, <laughs> those are funny. Right, right, right. Oh, look who we got here! We got another one coming in. Hold on, we got David Stewart in the house. How's it going? Hey, David. Well, I, I'm doing pretty good. And how are you two doing? Good, just hanging out. Great. Yeah. Want to say hello to uh, Roy because he and I have been on different podcasts like this before. So, oh, okay. Shout out to Roy. Uh, Roy, Roy is uh, one of the the regulars, so it's good to see the regulars, especially after this hiatus. So, again, thank you all tuning in. Um, Roy says the ZF and ZFC look pretty good for travel, but I'm biased to Nikon. You know what? Um, you're right. They both look good, but the ZF is, you know, on another stratosphere compared to that ZFC. It's so plasticky, that ZFC, and it's crop sensor. So to me, that's a no bueno right there because I would like to continue to still use the lenses. I've already paid a few thousand dollars for. Um, but it's I like I like the concept of it, uh, but the build quality too, not weather seal. That's just my opinion, and um, that ZF is pretty pretty. <laughs> well, when it comes to travel photography, I'm going to Vancouver, BC tomorrow. Ooh! And I'm taking my my F, my eight, and my nine. Oh, okay. Wow, wow. And, and my uh, fourteen to, to thirty, my twenty-four to one twenty, my hundred to four hundred. Plus, I have a couple of Sigma lenses, mm. F1.4. I'm doing a, a night photography workshop. Oh, I was about to say, that is a heck of a lot of gear. And, and what, what what made you decide to bring three camera bodies? Well, <clears throat> I'm getting ready for a longer trip, and I right. wanted to make sure that it all can, can come with me easily, or right. else I'll start leaving stuff behind. Got it. But it is last year I spent six weeks in the UK and I had my nine plus I plus uh plus my three Nikon zooms and a 24 millimeter F uh Nikon RF 1.8. And it's uh <clears throat> and that worked out well. And okay. I use Olympus for backup. Oh uh, Olympus. Sure. Yeah. Wow. Because, but when uh you want something small that, that you can hide and don't look much. You know, my, my Olympus uh, EM1 Mark II is just great. Small and, and incons in, inconspicuous. Yeah. yeah. I hope the uh, my uh, ZF will do that, but it's bigger. You know? Yeah. You know, um, it's bigger, but smaller than the Z8. That's the way I look at it. You know, try to justify it. But... <laughs> it, it's super light. It's super light, so um, you're not going to be weighed down, that's for sure. And the other thing I mentioned in my unboxing video, it will be out tomorrow, folks, um, is that I still get to use the same glass. Um, so that that's cool. I don't have to bring like two sets of glass um, with me on a trip. But I think you're going to have a great time. That's a, that's amazing. Let's see here. We got um, J. Rod says. I use my Z50 or Leica for quick point and shoot shots with family. I don't want to take away from the experience and always playing catch up. Uh, th that's a great point. That's a great point. Um, that's why I purposely used one camera body um, for Greece. Uh, otherwise, just use the phone. Hey, if you're going to use it, folks, use that Lightroom mobile app. I'm telling you, it is crazy what you could do. With pushing and pulling your um, dynamic range in these photos with that app. Um, Roy says, love the 40 mil F2. Z yep, that's the lens. That's the lens I want to get with the ZF. 
Only weaknesses. It's too uh, too much aperture flutter. Interesting. All right, I can't. I'm, I'll look out for that when I try it. Mm -hmm. But if I get the ZF, I'm gonna get it with that lens. So it is what it is. It's only like you know 200 more bucks or 200 something more bucks. Um, Vic says just came back from Colombia, packed a Timba Fulton V2, 10 liter with Fuji Film X Pro One, a Pana Lumix L L LX3, and GoPro gear. He was out there ready, uh, vlogging the trip as well as for photographing. Kind of, sort of, a light setup. Yeah, it is a kind of, sort of, but you covered all your bases. I I, I brought a GoPro, too. You cannot, uh, for traveling, that's the best thing going. And you, you, you can't, it's hard for you to break a GoPro. Like, you would really have to want to. And um, it gets you your nice wide shots of that cat that's on a desk randomly. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that cat is uh, kind of tall. This this guy is long. So he's, yeah, he's still kind of a kitten, but Jesus, he's, <laughs> he crawls out. He's he's pretty. He's a long cat. Did you see that documentary about cats on uh, Netflix that came out uh, last month? No, I haven't. Wow, it would trip you out. It tripped me out, and it was really talking about like just how uh, basically the not advantages, but like what makes cats really unique compared to dogs and other animals that we keep close to the home. Anyway, that's a huge side. That's a, you know, going that's off over the topic. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we'll get to that when we do cat photography. All right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Roy says, been so long since I've used my phone for photos that it doesn't remember how. Dang. Okay. Uh, all right. I use it all the time because it's in a back pocket. Um, and for social media, most of the time they don't, they don't freaking know, you know, um, also use my phone a lot for vlogging. Absolutely. Photos, videos, especially in areas where a camera would be attracting the wrong attention, a phone being a more common sight. You know what? Uh, the video I did with Greece travel camera bag, I shot the entire video on my iPhone in 4k and it did the job. It was quick. It was easy to, I didn't have to edit too much. So I get it. Yeah, I vlogged with it. I put the DJI Lav connected to it, and the audio sounded awesome. And I just did that. It is what it is. Has that have any of you used your iPhone for like serious photography moments? Um, yeah, I definitely. It's been the only thing I've had for an occasion. Uh, it's, it's you know, it's it suffices. I like I said, it's a, my iPhone's a 13 Pro, so it's it's got a decent lens on the 24. Okay. Uh, or whatever that that mid-range standard lens is the wide angle i absolutely love that on that camera um mm. or that phone uh the telephoto if i had to do it over again it would not be something I'd, I'd really care to have every time i pull it out to use it for telephoto unless it's like utilitarian it's worthless yeah you true. know it just has no no ability it's it's noisy grainy it's it just doesn't ever look good compared to the the primary camera in that in that phone so um that's i know they're getting better i know even like you know sony's xperia line they've got some really cool cameras inside it okay. um and also it basically acts like a sony uh, mirrorless camera as far as the menus and all the controls it does it pretty much every feature the mirrorless camera has it inside the phone which is which is a really cool Man, aspect of it cool. i haven't decided to bite the bullet on switching back to an android type device yet and Dave? Well, <clears throat> I don't use my phone for that, but I have a friend of mine that is a dentist that does. And I qu queried him one time saying I thought it was illegal for a dentist not to be using a Leica. But, but <laughs> wow, that was <laughs> but, funny. That, but he uses his iPhone, and I'm just simply amazed at the work that he produces with that. Damn. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's amazing what he can do. And his backup is, a, I'm not too sure what his backup is, but his main camera is his, is his iPhone. Shout out to Apple. Wow, that's awesome. That's awesome. It had, it, when I was hiking through some gorges in some very tough terrain, the phone is just like, it's just right there. Boom, frame it, done. And um, I can see why 
how useful it can be, but it has obviously serious limitations. Yeah, you know, it'd be interesting to see if like Apple ever makes an actual camera. Mm. I don't think they will. You know, like the with the firmware that they've got in their phones, that they can just produce so much for for so little. Oh, for yeah, so yeah, and, and if, that's... And, and if uh, Canon and Nikon and Sony spent the same amount on their firmware, you know, they'd, they'd never sell another camera again. Yeah, you yeah. You had to do everything with what you got. Yeah, I see what you're saying. So they've created a system where in which firmware updates will give you the next et cetera versus um, hardware. And yeah. then they don't hit their limitation as, as fast as, let's say, your Nikon Z9 will. And then you would have to buy the Z10. Well, it's going to be a while before the nine hits its limitation. No, but uh, but you know what I mean. But like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, um, it's, it's it's going to be a while. And, and and it's built into the industry because they want you to keep buying the next thing. You know yeah. what I mean? So that, that, that's how they make their money. Totally. And, and the the same thing with, with Apple, but, but uh, Apple is starting to find that people are keeping their phones longer and longer. And that's starting to hit their bottom line, you know. So, but, but as long as they, they, they everybody drinks the Kool Aid, Apple is happy. Every every October, absolutely. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Roy says the reason to take a camera on travel is the lens reach and the image quality over phones. Yes, you're right. You're right. But let's just be honest. It's it's convenient. So, but I I, I brought both. I brought both. I only brought three lenses and one camera body. Uh, two bodies means less dirty lenses changing. Yeah, you're right. Um, unfortunately, you know, I'm here in the Bay Area. I have, I'm have. i so paranoid about crime and thievery and everything. So even when I go to a nice place like Crete where I didn't feel not one ounce of threat or mischievous energy, um, I still have that mindset like ptsd in a sense so uh i went there okay one camera like slim as possible so but you know you're right about that um maybe if i was in like japan or somewhere where crime you, they barely even have a word for it um let's say roy unlike the g version the 24 to 120 is a great lens um okay guys you guys are really seriously making me consider that lens um, oh, it's a fantastic piece of glass. Oh Jesus! Here yeah. we go. No. It's my <laughs> it's my favorite for, for when I'm when I'm traveling. It's really? always on one of my bodies. Wow. All right, all right, all right. I have to call Derek and see if he has one in stock because I was gonna do anyway. It's a long story. All, all right. right, it's about time because I watched one of your shows and I bought a road mic, so you might as well do me the favor and, and buy a decent piece of glass. Wow, there we go. Shout out, to, <laughs> shout out to you calling me out. All right. Well, <laughs> I do have a sound effect for that. So let me be let me make sure this is a proper show I'm running here. Shot fired. Shot <laughs> fired my way. Okay. Uh Nick says, I don't really care about being F4. I shoot a five, six to seven because I want more people in focus or close to it. The wedding isn't just a bride and groom. Very good point. Very good point. Um, well, that's just a good point. So I'm not going to, I can't argue that. Um, I guess I'm big. I'm more, I like my faster apertures because there've been a lot of times in receptions, those halls or where they're eating and dining is darker than hell, except the dance floor. And uh, having that natural extra light means less power. I need to draw from my speed light and the batteries last longer. That's just me. That's just me. Um, but no, you're absolutely right that you're totally right in this case. If you're shooting a group of people, you might want five, six or six, three. So yeah. Um, J Ross has too cloudy for the scope tonight, David. Oh, oh, yeah, there, there's a, a, a bunch of us that, that are in here for into night photography. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, there, there's, yeah. And uh, I, I've known s some of them from from Chuck's show and and Jeff's show, and, and so that's how we know each other. There you can see. 
isn't it, I just love how small this community is. It's really crazy. Yeah. I was actually talking to Chuck this week. Oh, how is he? Oh, he's he's getting along. You know, he, he's he's uh, getting better, and um, he, he figures uh, he might come uh, on on the stream in another month or another couple of months. Awesome. And uh, it's uh, but <clears throat> and he has ordered the six hundred PF. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So, so he's not he's not that sick. <laughs> <laughs> All yeah. right, well, good. I'm glad that means he's in all happy spirits if he's clicking that button. So, oh no, that's real good. That's real awesome. And uh, obviously, he knows Nikon uh, never runs out of options for you to spend your money. So that's awesome. Uh, what did he say about the plenum? Did he mention anything about it? What no, did he... I, I uh, didn't didn't talk to him about that at all. Okay, you know, so we only had a had a short conversation. And right. uh, his daughter was visiting him. And, uh, Beautiful. Yeah, he's. Uh, I think he's he's improving. So like I, I uh, contact him or his his wife. He usually his wife fairly often. You know, so I know how how things are going. So. Good, everybody. Just in case who we're talking about, make sure you go ahead, uh, go follow my buddies over here. Subscribe to AP two uh, AP Studios as Chuck. We got Bahagan. We got Malcolm Walker. We got Selective Imagery, who's holding it down for AP Studios on Saturday. So go ahead and check them out. Go follow. It costs you absolutely nothing. And if you feel like it does, get off your high horse. Smash that like. Smash that subscribe. Anyway, I just had to say that. Um, next topic. Wait, wait. I think I have an extra. Dang, I got a lot of comments. Uh I do try to be regular. Hey, regular is all right. <laughs> no matter, even if your regular is crazy to us. Astro should be great with all solar activity this week. Shout out to that. And then uh, it should be that uh, I've been very unlucky for the last year and a half because whenever the aurora is good, it's been raining or snowing or something mm. like that. Mm. I haven't had a good. Wow, that sucks. Oh, <laughs> it, and uh, I, I just bought a, a Sigma, uh, the, the Art Lens, the F1.4, the, the 28, and also the, oh, the 35. You know, and uh, they'll go great on my Z8. But uh, oh, I, I also have an 810A for that, which is even better on that. So. Well, I like... Um... God, you have you sound like you have a great collection of glass. Oh, yeah, and and bodies too. Oh, geez. Okay. Well, one day I'll soon to represent Nikon as well as you do. <laughs> 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 I could only aspire. Um, I feel fancy with this film camera I never used that just stares at me up there on my shelf. That's about it. Um, uh, Anthony, our product highlight sponsor of, of today's show. Now that's travel gear 201 right there. Well, I think he was talking about this amount of stuff that you bring perhaps cuz it's certainly not me. I only brought I was super light lightweight. Uh I'd like to have the ZF but my D850 is my walkabout camera. You know what? When you Nick, when you get a chance, stop by your local camera store, say hi to them and just put that ZF in your hand and then grab that D850 and then and then let me know what you think because it is a huge difference. Huge, it's a huge, it's like the, I'll, be, I'll be right back, guys. So, oh, hang on, hang on. Yeah. yes, sir. Yeah, oh, there you go. That's it right there. Yeah, that, that's the ZF. Okay, now do you have the D850 at all or no? Yes, I've got a D850. Okay. I'm using the D850 as a webcam, that's how come it keeps going in and out of focus copy that okay the uh i was actually really surprised with the with the uh autofocus of that zf I, I think that's a great buy for that price i i really think nikon really did 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 us all some justice um what do we have here we got drunk wedding photographer recently got an olympus em1 classic for its panasonic sensor very cool Hey, if it's compact, that's a, that'll be a fun camera. I've done some street photography with the GH5 in New York, and uh, I was very shocked what I got out of it. 
Um, Roy says, I'd take my Sony A7 on holiday. Hope someone will steal it. <laughs> well, okay. There you go. <laughs> and then uh, you say, please, please take this. Uh, J. Rod says, just pack the in stacks and call it a day. Well, you know what? Keep it simple, right? K I S S. Mm -hmm. uh, Roy says, isn't a phone in your back pocket facing the wrong direction? Uh, it could be, especially if you're trying to get that quick shot and you get a shot of your butt or it's on selfie mode. <laughs> I've done that one one or two times. Oh, we got Derek. <laughs> hey, fellas, nice to see y'all. Derek, you could jump on, man, if you want to. The link is it's pinned to the top. You could jump in. And I think I texted him the link, too. So uh, Roy says, wish I'd bought a 6,000 series Sony instead of the A7. Wow. God, I wish Malcolm was here. I'd like to get his opinion about that because he shoots Sony. Um, the, the only one I would have got was the 6700 just because it has like the same sensor as the FX3 or, or FX30. So that's the one I would have gotten. Um, we got Luke. Hey, Robert. Hope you had a great holiday. Yes, I did. It was long. It was awesome and always too short. So there you go. I would definitely recommend going to Greece. Again, if you love nature, if you love hiking, and you love how far your money will go, Crete is a phenomenal island. Um, it was so many juicy goody goodies. If you ever use All Trails, David, you ever use All Trails, the app? No. All Trails is phenomenal. Um, and it's an app as well as a desktop, you know, website. And it, you just say, oh, I want to go hiking. And you, you just type in where, and it'll give you a whole list of hikes and et cetera, beaches and whatnot. And wow, it blew my mind how many uh, opportunities for nature, to enjoy nature in, uh, on, on the island of Crete. So if you ever had that way, that just know you're going to do some landscape and you're going to do some serious freaking hiking. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. But it was breathtaking. I've never, yeah, it was just amazing. I honestly felt too lucky. Uh, Roy, I was there for a wedding, so it wasn't my first choice. Uh, Roy, if Apple made a camera, then they would uh, solder the cards in. <laughs> yeah, they would figure out some way to do some crazy crap with it, where in which we have to pay more every time, every year. Like what, like you talked about the batteries, right? Like all of a sudden our batteries don't last as long. Very suspicious. Very suspicious. Well, I'm still using a battery manufactured in 2011. Oh. Be because I still have all my F-mount bodies. Wow. And uh, because for night photography, I use more F-mount than I do mirrorless. Why is that? Well... Most of my glass that, that I have is, is F mount. I've got an 810A, which is for astrophotography. And that's the only Nikon that Roy Bixby does not own. Wow. He owns almost everything else. And, uh, it, and it's infrared sensitive. So it, it's nice. And Very then I, as, as the second camera, I use my 810A. And, uh, and lately, I've been using my, my Z8 also on this, but but uh, I haven't. I've only used my Z9 once for night photography. And and how, and now, do you see a quality difference between the the Z and the uh, the mirrorless and the DSLRs? Do you see any? Well, I shoot everything manual, so I don't see much of a difference. And, okay. and I, I use the same glass on them all, you know, and. Uh, it's for for some of this stuff. I, I prefer to use the 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 F mount, especially when it's cold out, because mm. when it's cold, I know when the camera is going to fail because I can tell by the sound. I don't know yet, but my Zs are going to fail or not because they don't make a sound. And the last thing, you know, I don't freezing a camera is one thing, but freezing it to destruction is a different thing. Very good. Yeah, I can't. I can't blame you, but um, I'm just curious to see from your perspective. That's actually 
good to know. I don't do that style of photography, but I'm just curious, you know. But I, it, but overall, you don't see a difference, though. Well, I don't. I don't see a big difference. Okay. You know, it's um, but the other night I was out with my my Z8, and uh, the autofocus works on stars with my Sigma lenses. Mm, with your Sigma lenses. Yeah, because they're f one point four. Yeah. So and and the uh, it, it's surprising how well the autofocus works on with the D eight fifty. I was out shooting a Aurora one night and and I, I left a, the, the focus on auto and I was surprised that it was focusing on some trees I had in the foreground. It, mm. And you know, but, but these cameras are they're getting so so good. But for all my stuff I always focus manual even though the autofocus works. Well, that that's actually, um, yeah, that was just something I just wondered, like when it came to Astro and stuff like that, where the two, where there are any big performance differences between the two uh, kinds of cameras, you know, the mirrorless versus DSLR. Well, but it yeah. sounds like overall you're good to go. Yeah, there, there's no good Z mount glass yet that, that that's as big and wide and, uh, mm. and affordable. And affordable. Yeah. What, what 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 focal range uh, would you ideally like to see that would serve your need? Well, my first, well, my first piece of glass that I want is a twenty eight. Yeah, and right. and, uh, and lots of times when I'm shooting the Aurora, I want to make sure that that uh, that fills the frame vertically, and if. I, it's no use filling the frame horizontally because then all you see is a little line, you know, of green. But if I fill the frame vertically and and I'll I'll crop into the to where the to where where the action is because it, it's the action is never the same all the way across. But uh, lots of times I find my my twenty f one point eight, which is an icor, is too wide. You know, um, and uh, and I very rarely go wider than that, but but I do have a, an eight to fifteen, which I've used on occasions, and uh, I've actually had on a sh you know, shoot straight up and I get Aurora all the way around, wow. you know, in the frame. But it depends on the night, you know. Every night is different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, hold on. Oh, J Rod says good news about Chuck, obviously. I think that's great. I need at least 1.8 for candlelit wedding dinners. Yeah, that's. I just like them. I like them a little bit wider. That's just my, my good, my take on that. Let's get to the real quick. Let's get to the next thing, which is, what lenses should you bring for travel photography? Malcolm, what would you bring if you're traveling? Let's say a week, etc. Not near home. What would you bring? Uh, twenty-four, one hundred five. Oh, that's 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 that'd be my go-to for that. I've had, I've had a one hundred, four hundred. I miss it. Um, I overall, I love having that lens, and I use it consistently when I had it. But of course, it's not exactly a compact travel lens. But uh, I like just having the, the versatility of that, the twenty-four, one hundred five. I can get in enough and. And it gives me plenty of wide if I need it. Dave, uh, <clears throat> the, um, the the twenty four to one twenty for sure, and uh, the second lens is either the hundred to four hundred, or the the fourteen to thirty. But ideally, um, I have all three. Ideally, all three in that. Okay. Uh, ironically, I chose completely different lenses for my trip. Um, I did the twenty, uh, the twenty to sixty mil kit lens that comes with the Lumix S5 Mark II, because I wanted that ex that extra four millimeters from twenty four to twenty is a big difference. Oh, it sure is. Um, and and for me, that lens is so underrated because for when I brought it to Barcelona, I used it eighty percent of the time because it's wide for the cathedral shots. When you're interior, you want the wide. Um, and it's sharp, even though it only goes down to three five. 
it was more than enough for walking around with, and it's compact. Then I brought a 50 prime, the uh, Sigma F14 lens um, for some portrait, you know, kind of stuff since it was a family wedding. And I brought that 35 1.4 with me. And those were the three lenses I brought. It sounds absolutely crazy compared to what you all are suggesting, but that's what I brought. I had to also think of creating content with it too. Well, that, that's a big difference because you went for a different purpose. You know, and um, but uh, I, I like the, the, those three zooms because they're they're really bright and they're really sharp and uh, and lots I don't have as much use for the the 14 to 30 because I can always shoot a, a panorama with a 24 to 120 and, and uh, I think nothing of of up to 30 shots in a panorama you know and they can be two two rows or three rows or I, I've done a, a four by four panorama. Oh, okay. And it works out great. It works out real good. Okay. Yeah. So. And, and that means a lens, that's a lens you don't have to carry. Mm. Yeah. I, I need to, I need to get more versatile. I think honestly, one lens that caught my eye was the, um, what is it? I think it was the to 100 to 400 or something like that like if i was to get a little bit more telephoto lens wide um i realize that i i don't use a, the 14 to 24 as much unless it's for weddings established shots um when i'm in uh, before everybody shows up for the reception stuff like that uh interior shots but i don't use it as much as i thought i would um if i could i'd get that 85 one too though that i wish i could yeah like I'm going to uh, get rid of my uh, 14 to 24, uh, my F mount, because uh, the quality of it doesn't compare to my my 14 to 30 Z mount. Wow, yeah. really? It's that big of a difference? That big of a difference, and then there's the weight besides, you know, and I and I have the 1635 F F mount also, mm. and uh, I don't like when it comes to glass. I'm not, don't quite have as much as Roy. I might have a third as much as Roy, but uh, I've I've got everything that that I want, you know. But it, uh, like the 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 Z glass, it is fantastic, and uh, and what I recommended to a friend of mine today is she, she's looking for to fill some gaps that Nikon has, and I said, look at Sony. You get an adapter, put your Sony glass on your Nikon, you know, and because uh -huh. she was she was wanting something to go between 70 and 180 or in the 200, but she didn't want the the Nikon F2.0, uh, the Nikkor glass because it was too heavy to carry around. Mm. Yeah, and, and the nice thing about the, the Z mount is you can get an adapter for almost anybody's glass. And put um, on your on your Nikon. You know, I mean, God bless those. I I I'm really big on native, my personally when it when and if possible. Um, but I, if it works, it works. What can you do? But I, I I'm glad that Nikon at least allows for that to even possibly exist. If you're not gonna, if you're not gonna make all the lenses we want. Um, and and I'm glad they start to release. Uh, you know, third parties allowing to use their stuff. So that's pretty yeah, good. It, it, it'll grow. It'll grow over time. Because Sony was in the same boat eight years ago when they started making well, their made cameras about, you know, full frame oh. about 10 years ago. But it's, you know, when the when the Mark IIs came out in around 2015, there there wasn't a lot of full frame glass for them. And, you know, the third party options were huge. Everybody coming over from Canon that could put on a their EF mount glass right onto the Sony and and it worked, you know, flawlessly. Fine. Oh, okay. And then, but Sony did also have their A mount, which is their the old Minolta stuff uh, when they when they purchased Minolta, mm -hmm. uh, and then they started making the the their DSLR cameras. All that glass was adaptable to the Sony, the newer Sony's as well. So, you know, Sony's got some really nice A mount glass. It's just a it's a it's older older tech you know older technology out there, but uh, they're they've 
what his was it like 60 some full frame lenses now i think on the lineup it's, it's a massive amount of lenses that they have and, yeah. and Nikon will get right there over the next two or three years you guys will have more glass to know what to do with well yeah i'm excited for that we, we've got our, our long glass now pretty well because we got our 600 tc and the 600 pf hmm. and the 800 i've got an 800 pf and a 500 pf and uh it, the thing with, with the the 500 pf i can i've used that as a walk around lens all oh, yeah. it it's fan, it it's light it, it's not that long you know and uh, it's not that heavy and i'll walk around with on my z9 and it's amazing the shots that you can get in the fast you know it focuses really fast it's really sharp you can crop right into almost nothing and and it's still sharp Dang. Yeah, but uh, but what what I've been recommending is look at other manufacturers to, to go on to your your Nikon until the you know because there's always going to be a gap. Yeah, that's true. And and, uh, and if if you need a, a lens that somebody else makes that does what you want at the price you can afford, go for it. Go for it, huh? Yeah. But anyway, I'm going to have to to let you go, Robert. Oh, okay. And, and, and you have yourself a, a good evening. I got yes, to figure out how to get out of this. <laughs> well, <laughs> everybody, let's make sure we give Dave a round of applause for joining us tonight here at Let's Talk Photography. Come on now, people. Yeah. There you go. I can let you out, Dave. Thanks a lot, have man. A good night, Dave. Have a good one. Uh, okay? Good night. Good night. There we go. Awesome. Thank you very much, Dave. Yet again for stopping by. <laughs> And uh, rubbing it in my face about how much glass I don't have. No, <laughs> uh, no, that was good. Uh, I always appreciate people stopping by. Uh, Roy says, I'd love a D810A body. Dang, now we're going back. That was my first 800 series was the D810. Um, good evening, every, everyone. Thank you, Rakesh, for stopping by. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm keeping a D850 for the jobs a mirrorless can't do. You know, I sold my D850 to get the Z9. So there you go. I had to put money toward it. That 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 was a hell of a punch, that Z9 in the gut, you know, for that price. Uh, Roy says, Roy is a greedy gear hog. Hey, -o. so shout out to Roy talking smack to Roy. Uh, Nick says, I use cute tips to clean my D850 sensor with eyeglass cleaner. Worked great too. Interesting. Cause I would be nervous because Q tips could, may leave like a little, you know what I mean? Like Malcolm, you Fun. know, yeah, you know, I'd be nervous, but I understand the logic for sure. Uh, you know, you blow it all out and get it clear. It should work fine. I mean, I'm not afraid to clean my sensors. I, I do buy the swabs for it. But uh, I've never had a problem with cleaning my own sensors. Yeah, I use a swab. The um, whoever makes the swab, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. That if, that if, one. If, if, if you want to really watch an interesting video, it's uh, uh, Arthur R. He's a you know like a Sony APS-C kind mm -hmm. of channel. But uh, he he bought a an old Sony camera that was in op or an old and, and he did a full destruction test on on a sensor. Like what would actually damage it. It was it's a good video, good watch. Okay, when you find it again, just send me the link, brother, because yeah. uh, I, I would like something to drink. I mean, watch before I drink coffee. You know what I mean? <laughs> Not while I'm doing it. Yeah. He did what? No. Um. Remember, when, didn't Jared Poland did the video where it's he just stuck it up toward the sun or something? Who was that that did the sun and it melted the sun? I don't know. Uh, maybe it wasn't Jared, but. Somebody did it just to see, like, when the eclipse and, like... Well, my, mine survived the eclipse, but I had a the nine-stop uh, Polar Pro filter on it. Oh, nine-stop, yeah. Nine-stops, and it wasn't enough. I, I didn't even look at the images yet, honestly. I, I, but the, I kept... I did keep the cap on. I put the little rubber cap on the, the sensor, the, the lens, as uh, as I was waiting, and then I would go take it off and I'd go check the shots or mm. make adjustments, okay. but... I, yeah, the nine stops and, and F22 and one five hundredth of or one thousandth of a shutter speed just wasn't enough to make it work. Wow. 
I mean, I got the Ring of Fire, but I, you can't get the detail shots that some of these guys get with the high end filters. And the, what kind of filter do you think they would need? Uh, I don't, you know, I didn't study it. This, I, I know I got the email from like BH saying, Hey, here's your last chance to get the filter in time. And I'm like, oh, I'm not going to spend any money right now, but <laughs> I got another one in, in April that will be real close to here. So that one I plan on going to, to try to do something a little bit more with maybe, but you really need a, I think you really need a telephoto lens, like a 400 or something to, to really, cause even 105 is my longest reach full frame I have right now. Shooting APS-C mode. It, it was, it, it's a decent frame, but it's nothing so spectacular. Okay. I was just curious as to like how many yeah. stops would it be needed to, uh, those indie 1000s, I think they want you to have. Uh, I think, you can, I think you can even use, um, like a piece of tin foil or, or certain types of foil if it's thin enough okay. to, to filter. But I didn't play with any of that. It is just cool, though. If you haven't been in the eclipse, it's, you know, all the all the light coming through the trees is all eclipsed. So we've got I've got some uh, a photo of just on the phone, uh, just all the little circles on the ground. Oh, OK. Yeah. yeah. Because it's, cool. it won't burn through your sensor. Yeah. Uh, hold on. Roy says, uh, I'd like to know more about Canon's new 10 to 20 millimeter full frame F4 lens. Oh, that's freaking wide. Holy yes, Christ. Sony just released that lens too. Oh, really? I think and, uh, was, it, was it full? Oh, I don't know if it's full frame. That's an APS-C lens, I think. 10 to 20. Uh Sony's got the 16 to 30 16 to 35 F4 power zoom they released, which is a gimbal gimbal camera dream lens. But uh the 10 to 20 they released on an APS-C. I don't think it's a full frame. Oh, so it'd be more like what a uh, fifteen mil or something? Fifteen to thirty. Thirty. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That sounds about right. Um, kind of like a sixteen to thirty-five kind of a thing going on. Mm -hmm. Um, Roy says Q-tips from India are cotton. The bad ones are from China. The synthetic. Oh, okay. There you go. We learned something new. So it's the type of Q-tips that we are not getting. I thought they might shed or something. Welder's glass is a cheap alternative, but the color. Oh, okay. You've done that. Yeah, you just you get the green tinge from it. Uh, you know, in, you in your that? image. Can you fix that, like with white balance or anything? I'm I'm sure with yeah. I mean, you could shoot it black and white if you wanted, and it'd work good. Or or just yeah, just just do all your color corrections in post. But okay, it, it's a very dark green glass that the. That the welders mask use because I've had a, I had a full frame that I put, just put over the top of the lens. Mm. Uh, but before I had a, a high zoom mirrorless. And then, okay, I'll try. I'm, I'm, I don't know what I would like to do it one day where I try to go for a solar clip situation. But the lens, I would need something like wh what kind of a lens? Like at least an eight hundred or something. Four hundred or eight hundred probably because four hundred in the full frame is is still not enough. I I think. You know, I sold my 100 400 and Sony's been re renewing all their their uh, trifectas into a Mark II versions. And I'm hoping that 100 400 kind of gets that update, and I'd be really enticed to get that lens again in, a, in an updated lens. Okay. They, you know, that they have the 200 to uh, 600. And I thought, well, that with a 70 to 200 would make a lot of sense, and then just get a two time converter, and you're at 1200. You know? Oh, yeah. And, and, that may be something more I like to go to, but coming down to travel, the 200 600 is a fixed long lens. It doesn't, yes. it doesn't move with the 400 400 packs down pretty small. Yeah. So, yeah, no, no, no. I would I'll travel that would it'd be because I want to. Like, um, yeah. I don't know if I was one of those kind of photographers, but uh, no, I wouldn't do it. Um, Roy says, obviously, you know, the most cheap ND filters have a color cast. So, yeah, you have to watch out for that for sure. You know, whatever you put at the end of your glass is your ass. Um, all right. So let's see here. I think I'm actually got for once actually caught up, which is a little shocking. So don't tell anybody. Um, let's see here. Uh, curious. Real quick before I have to shut this puppy down. Uh, what camera bag do you use for travel? 
Uh, I've been just sticking with the tried and true. Uh, oh, drawing the blank on it. Where's that? Right here. <laughs> Think tank. Well, that's just, convenient. <laughs> yeah. I was like, wait a minute, where are they at? They're right here. Um, so this is the airport uh, essentials, I think. Okay. And I've had this bag for a quarter of the way here. Is this the 2.0 version? Is it the... Um... This is No, this is just Airport Essentials. It's an older bag. Okay. This has been the daily driver for my kit for, what, five, six years now? And it's held up flawlessly. I have not had one tear, rip, undone stitch, or... And it, this bag weighs every bit of probably 30-plus pounds. And you fit um, everything you need in there, and that's what you I, would travel with. Yeah, that's what I travel with. The only thing I, I mean, I have been wanting to get a more uh, robust, like hiking bag, camera bag, or something like that 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 has a um, a back opening. That'd be huge to me because this one you have to lay it down on the straps of the back panel, then I get it up and my back gets dirty. Um, so I definitely do back opening for travel if I had to buy a new bag. Okay, and yeah, I learned uh, that the bag gets heavy when you're moving moving around. That's where I stopped carrying everything. That was the point where when I mean, you start out as a new photographer, carry you everything. Want to carry everything. And then now I'm at the point of like, if I can't make it work with this, then it ain't worth it. No, I'm the same way. Uh, I have two camera bags. Let me grab them real quick, okay? okay. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, so I've got another one I bought. I picked this one up on Facebook for... This is the Streetwalker hard drive, and it's a bigger bag for DSLR um, with the Think Tank. And I, I mainly just carry my lights in this one for uh, if I'm doing a night shoot or anything where I want to illuminate the foreground or anything, I'll throw like uh, some Rotolite Neos in here. I got two tripods in here, the three Neos. Oh, shit. And, oh, that, uh, yeah. I have that same bag. I love that bag, the hard yeah, drive. It, yeah, it's a big bag. It, it holds a lot, but um, lot. I never, I, I've never liked it for the mirrorless cameras. Is that they're just too small for it? You well, know, you know what? Yes, more like a D850 would be great. Fits a 17 inch laptop. Can't be mad. That's right. Um, r real quick, I have the Lumix. I mean Lumix. It, it's it says Lumix <laughs> on it, but it's actually uh, Peak Design. Their backpack. This is what I brought to Greece. So everything had to fit in here. Laptop, yeah. my 14 inch laptop, and you know the compartments here. If you ever seen this bag, you know you could put your camera, accessories up top, camera, mm -hmm. and a couple lenses down here. And this 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 thing fits awesome. I went, I hiked all sorts of trails with this. And for street photography, I love this little sling bag. It's peak design as well. I think it's a 10 liter. And um, it just looks like a messenger. So a small messenger bag. So you wouldn't right, know that right. there's a $4,000 camera in there stuff. Somewhere. Right, right. So, but those are the two that I use for, for the travel. And of course, once in a while, I'll pull out a, a the retrospective think tank bag, the canvas looking bag. Those are fun. But uh, it's funny how like we have multiple bags, like women have purses. It's, it's a yeah. guy. God damn shame. No. <laughs> so I said it in the unboxing of the ZF. Uh, you'll see it says, you know, like, you know, you, we all have at least three camera bags. So don't act like you don't know. <laughs> yeah, but, I, I found one. I found it a little, I think it's a little low pro. I bought at Target on clearance for 10 bucks. It's a little, little, little single camera, you know, and one okay. lens kind of bag. But I've got a. <laughs> I've got an A6600 here somewhere uh, in this room that I'm, I'm selling for a friend and I'm going to make some content around it before I sell it. He's going to let me do that. But the, uh, um, he's got a really nice little think tank, think tank, little sling bag. that's just a single camera lens, but it's got the expandable lens slot. So if you put a bigger lens on, you can unzip it. And, uh, I want to keep that bag for myself. So I got this little low pro for the camera to sell it. So okay, and you you said you found it where now at like Target? Uh, it was at Target for like ten bucks. It's a little forty dollar, you know, low pro bag. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Shout out to Target, Karen, low yeah. pro. Um, okay, hold on, let me just ch ch catch up on this because I'm hitting my mark here. I got I got a split Ola. 
Uh, my mirrorless bag is heavier than my DSLR or film bags ever were. Isn't that something? Maybe because you're stuffing more lenses in there. Luke S. Right. Love my low pro bags. What's that? I'm surprised how heavy my mirrorless bag is. It's it's it gets it's so. It, I guess it's just it's so dense. You can pack it up so dense and tight you, with everything. Well, the lenses yeah. aren't light. I mean, I don't know and, what. And no, the lenses the, the lenses have never been light. They they can be if you buy the right ones, but not when you're buying you know good good glass. Exactly. They make you pay for it. I also have the bigger heavy travel bags when needed. Yes, I only do that when I get paid to do some. Screw that. Uh, Love Pro. Uh, Low Pro are the best padded, but amongst the heaviest for the size. I, You know what? Consistent, consistently, I've always had great experience with Think Tank. So, you know. Yeah, I, I, can't, I can't knock this Think Tank. Like I said, it's been a daily driver with everything in it for six plus years. And it's, I remember talking to throwing it in the truck every day. Uh, it's been on every trip with me. It, 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 and it has almost virtually no signs of wear. And it just it just works. I think yeah. yeah, they've proven this to me right there on that bag. Uh look what J Rod says going to B and H next week. Better not take the credit cards. Yeah, no. Put them in ice. Put them in yeah, ice. For real. For real. Bury them. Bury them. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh David says lens are great at getting lighter, but only by 10%, maybe. They're getting um, there. They're getting there. But um, what I do like is that sometimes, even though they're heavy. I like that they tend to be like more compact. Um, well, this will be for another discussion, probably for another another video discussion. But uh, you know, how much of the manufacturers able to, and this getting back to Apple, how much of the manufacturers are able to cheat on the lenses and how the quality is in the manufacturing by what the camera can reproduce with it digitally? Oh. Like, is there any trickery going on to adjust that you, you know they already do it, but they they adjust the lens spec or the lens coming or the lens uh, light ray coming through digitally after the fact, even on a raw. Yeah, they like, compensate it through the camera. You're saying, right, right, right. And That's you know perfect. how how much is that going to go into the future of, of these professional cameras? You know, to make the lenses smaller and lighter. Yeah. So the camera is processing it. Well, it's being processed in camera, in a sense, the exposure, right. et cetera. That would be interesting. Well, like the, it's like another thing. Like, have you ever messed with one of those light field cameras? Mm -mm. So, um, uh, okay. So, if you ever watched the, the that show on Amazon, The Expanse, did you ever see that one? No. Uh, well, anyways, the, in The Expanse, it's a future set thing where the human race is exploring the solar system and has minds on different moons and stuff, but the they had a reporter on one of the ships and, and they had a light field camera that was a little tiny camera but i actually bought one of these old light field cameras for like 100 bucks on on uh, on facebook one day just it looked like a cool old camera it was like a 16 or 700 dollar camera not that long ago but the light field shoots at one aperture and it reads and measures the light rays coming into the camera so therefore you can focus at any of your images at different focal points at any time in your post process Wow. And because it knows the angle the light was coming in. Oh, and, wow. Uh, that's some future like tech technology that's we're going to see coming out, I think. But uh, Lightfield started working with cinema movie cameras, and then they kind of went under. I don't think it was Lightfield. That's what made me know about that. But uh, okay. research Lightfield. I think I'm pretty sure it's called Lightfield. I'm or at least the camera that. technology was. But uh, it's a what? whole another, another type of camera. Yeah, especially the way that it understands how light is entering. Right. So that's pretty fascinating. Uh, let me get to these here real quick. It says, Roy says, Chinese lenses have many plastic instead of glass elements, making them lighter. Ugh. Uh, I have a Nikon bag that's great too, but just don't like the Nikon logo on it. Yeah, that just says rob me. Uh, all, of, uh, all of our local shops are gone. Well, that is horrible. I, I'll tell you that. Um, but the Best Buy in the next town over is awesome with a large camera display. Well, that's yeah. shocking because I know a lot that have a horrible camera section. Yeah, so I've got two Best Buys. The one in my town uh, is 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 trash. They've got like some APS-C cameras out, but the one in Midland, about twenty minutes away, 
they've mm -hmm. got the full upgrade and they've got the full Canon display, the full Nikon display, and the full Sony display with well, they had a Z8 on the Nikon display. Um, they had most all the Canon cameras, and then even on the Sony, they had pretty much every Sony camera imaginable, uh, uh, that's the current model, and as well as all the lenses there. Wow. And they okay. really stepped up their game, but for a smaller town, I was surprised they did that. So Best Buy is definitely stepping it up for us on that end of it, I think, but uh, um, not everywhere. Yeah, I, I've noticed even in Bay, it's hit or miss, but most are miss um unfortunately i'm gonna have to wrap this up we're hitting about two hours and let me get on over okay everybody come on now if you haven't already make sure you go ahead and smash that like okay uh let me take this thing off what, what's going on here smash that like that subscribe and hit that bell notification icon to get notifications of my upcoming content uh right now go ahead and subscribe to AP Studios Biography and Malcolm Walker. You see that L there, right, Malcolm? There you go. Oh, yeah, there you go. There you Shout go. out to you. <laughs> and selective imagery on YouTube. There are in our fellow community, and they go live weekly. And Malcolm, when do you, when do you go live? Shout yourself out. Uh, Monday nights at 9 p.m. Central. And I'm doing my best to keep that going right now. Uh, the studio kind of dictates where I'm at on Monday nights. So Copy it's that. Built up, but... Uh, it's been kind of just a mess to get on, but yes, I've been trying to do it. All right. So make sure you go ahead and follow him at Malcolm Walker. Okay. Go follow him right now. And, uh, all right, Malcolm, I will see you later, my friend. I'll, I'll chime in on your, um, on your live stream on Monday. Okay. Sounds good, bud. All right, Take man. Care, Thanks a lot. All right, everyone. Um, I'm going to have to wind this puppy down. Oh, look at that. J Rod said I smashed it over five times. All right. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, and J Rod said another great session. Thank you, man, for tuning in. I really appreciate it. I really, really do. <laughs> really do. Um, with all that said, let's get down to the menu. Let's get down to the end uh, cycle of business here. Make sure you go ahead and check out my local, I mean, my most latest video right there um hold on what let me turn this off what am i doing oh cool hey j rock there you go malcolm he just subscribed there you go there you go thank you very much j rod for tuning in really appreciate the support all right so with all that said um i have my um latest video check it out see what i pack for my travel camera bag on my youtube channel stay tuned for my upcoming unboxing of the zf in collaboration with mike's camera come on i also have my upcoming workshop here in san francisco at a beautiful botanical garden it's outdoor flash photography that's what we will be going over so get your cameras ready and get yourself a godox trigger and your life will be easier if you choose to attend my workshop. Now, you can find out more by heading on over to Photography Workshops. But, um, well, just click in education at robertsilverphotography.com. That's right. I have a tab right up top. says education. Click that, and it'll take you right on over to all the workshops I have coming up. Um, what else is there? And one of the best ways to support this channel is right here on my Patreon, where I'm going to be posting, sharing daily educational content for us photographers and news as well and yes i will be doing some exclusive live streams just for my patreon so feel free to go on over there and yes whatever it is that you can do to help support my endeavors will allow me to buy another cup of coffee all right so let's wind this puppy down shall we all right so, as I said earlier, make sure you go ahead and follow me on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Threads. And, yes, I'm on TikTok and Twitter. Come on now. Go ahead and follow me over there. All the links can be found in my description section down below. All right. Um, what else is there? I think I pretty much hit everything for once. Who would have thought? And, yes, I'll be going live again. Um, stay tuned. This is going to be a crazy next week or so. I got to get some uh, videos out of the way. 
and then I can finally start going live a little bit more. But I just want to tune in with all of you. I really appreciate you all. And of course, until next time, keep shooting, stay creative. Thank you for watching.